Hi everyone, welcome back into the studio. Today, I had a request to do some uh, white hydrangeas. So those of you that have been with the channel for a while know last year, last May or so, I painted, uh, let me grab this right over here. I painted this one showing you uh, some hydrangeas on it. It's quite a large painting and some different ways to do some, some fun hydrangeas. And boy, has it been popular. It's been watched about 140,000 times. So it's kind of popular. So I had some requests to do uh, white hydrangeas. How would you do white hydrangeas? And which is a really good one because whites carry warm and cools and they're really kind of fun to paint. And I have done uh, several videos on uh, this this winter on snow and painting snow is very similar to painting white hydrangeas, those colors. But let's go through them, okay? So what I have here is a board and it's 14 inches this way. It's about 20 inches uh, this way. And, uh, you know, I might take it down, but I might just put, you know, paint a nice composition, kind of similar to this one right in here with some of these white hydrangeas and let a lot of negative space happen out through here. So, uh, you know, and when you're dealing with a lot of whites, that's kind of a good, a good thing. I can even let it go back to the, the white of the canvas. So we might, we might do that. That tends to make the painting more airy, which is kind of nice. Now to get that white, to really make that white show, we have to do a lot of what we call simultaneous contrast, which is some of those darker colors, which is what I did on this other one. But I have some reference photos here. I got these over from Adobe Stock. I went over and purchased them this morning on Adobe Stock. Those of you that are in the membership of this channel, if you go over to the community page, I will put those references over there so you can paint right along with me with some of those references, okay? Now, these are the colors. This is the YouTube palette I normally use. Uh, I've added out a couple of neutrals here. These are uh, color neutrals. These, I mean, these are the medium beige, uh, light gray and medium white. These are all neutrals. Uh, and when I'm painting a lot of white, sometimes I like to have out a few neutrals to assist me in that. And I'm going to start some of the painting out with that. Let's get right to it. Okay. Oh, one last thing here. Uh, this is a board. This is a panel. This is an MDF panel. And then I, I gave it um, a couple coats of the uh, Heritage Canvas Prep Medium, sanded it with 180 grit sandpaper. So I leave that that tooth, that matte tooth that I like. I explained that in a prep video here on the channel just about a month or so ago. Okay, so you can look and find that one. So let's just take some extender. This is some of my extender medium. This uh, is the Heritage Extender Medium that I use. Okay, works with the Heritage Paint. This right out here is the open medium that I use with that. All the links to everything I use, of course, is down in the video description below. Let's take a neutral. So one of the neutrals I like, it's one of my favorite, is to take medium beige and the light gray. And I'm going to add some extender to this with a big two inch wide brush. And we're going to come right here through the center of our painting. And I'm just, I'm going to concentrate where, and I'll let some of this get very, um, you know, very contemporary here out to the sides. Uh, where I want to go and I'll leave those brush marks because those will give some power to what it is that I'm painting here. So I'll just mix this up. Let's add a little more extender and let's push some of this out this way. I love, I love brush marks into my paintings. I think I love the contemporary look of those into my paintings. I just think it adds so much. So, you know, leaving something like that, that's just really kind of fun. Now, Let's add, and I might do, should I do this with the big brush or should I go a little smaller? Now, you know, sometimes that's the thing, choosing your brush. If you're usually working with the background, you use a larger brush so that those marks stay a little bit larger and they won't have as much interest. In other words, you know, like looking at your palette here. If I go like this, that has a lot of interest. If I go like this, that has less, right? So the number of brush marks that you put in there can make a lot of interest to a painting. So you have to kind of think about it. And I'm thinking, how much interest do I want? Let's try big and then we'll go back if we need to. We'll take some burnt sienna and some green, which helps us make some of these darker greens and stuff that we stay down here. And I want this just a touch warmer, so no blue here. 
and I'll push some of this right into, let's just pull that down. Isn't that pretty with that, that wet that goes in there? But I don't want to mix it too much because I want to keep some of that color, that initial color coming off of there. See, just like that. That's kind of pretty here. Sometimes I just, sometimes I love my background. So it's like, oh, I got a paint on top of it. Someday I'm just going to start varnishing backgrounds because I just love how some of them go. You know, just get that power and that movement there with those backgrounds. That background is really wet. I probably added just a touch too much extender to it, but we'll work through that. Okay, that's kind of pretty here. And let's just take a little bit of it off there. I want to leave some of this contemporary white look coming right out there. Now, let's focus in a little darker where we're going to want our center. So a little more burnt sienna, a little bit of blue, a little bit of red violet. This is going to cool it and darken it. Okay. And right in where we're going to have some of our center part of our... Uh, our, our hydrangea right in maybe right in through here we might just do one or two hydrangeas out here maybe pull some of this down just a bit here give that downward feeling of it that's good sometimes i'll take and just touch a few marks very i just love the you know the the richard smith one of the ala prima painters and uh, he created a style of Ola Prima that I just love. He called it the Grand Manor style. A magnificent artist. Um, and we lost him almost two years ago, I guess. Um, but his his touching of the colors around and movement is just magical. Sometimes I will take, you know, and, and use I don't I don't think I'll do it here, but this also makes beautiful marks is your knife, working your knife up and through here because it just makes beautiful other beautiful marks well i wasn't going to use it but now i am these beautiful marks that come down outside here and you know that's the thing is you can create some of these beautiful marks here outside of that so now i want to paint this hydrangea in here this is i'm going to paint one main one right here a couple smaller ones or something like that maybe a couple of them in here not quite the same composition that i did here this will be too much paint so i'm going to take some of this off i just take a paper towel i want to leave some of this color because this anchors the the hydrangea here to the ground i mean to the background so I want to leave some of that, but I want to take some of that out. Let's put another smaller one, maybe even the sideways turned one right up in here. Another, maybe a little mark of one. We'll drop some more right down here. So I'm just taking off some of the other colors here for, for this. And we might put something else back out there, but right in there. So that'll be a, a nice painting for the hydrangeas that way, okay? Do you see them? Maybe if you squint, <laughs> you can see them, okay? Now, I want to leave some of this neutral, but I don't need all of this in the way, so I'm just going to move some of this. I'll leave some of that little neutral over there. Now, most, a lot of the hydrangeas, when I go to paint them, I use uh, filberts. I am going to come in here first, though, with like a, uh, this is my one inch, uh, maybe a one inch or maybe even a three-quarter inch here. I don't want to go too, too big here. And we'll set up some color into the into the hydrangea here. So let's set up a cool side and warm side. So when you see... You know, I put this photo out here so that you see this. It has a warm side, very much yellow, and then the violet, blue violets, red violets right in there, those pinky violets, <coughs> cool side to it. And that is really pretty. As a matter of fact, that's a beautiful one. Something similar to that sitting right up there would be really kind of pretty, wouldn't it? So let's see if we can do that. Let's take a a little bit of cool. Normally I start out with slightly warm, but I'm just going to put some cool down here. Okay, I don't want this to be too dark, so I'm going to grab some uh, some white with this and lighten this up. Now, 
maybe a touch more blue. That is really kind of a red violet. I like it slightly blue here, okay? Now, here's another way. If I want to make an intermediate tone, this is medium white. Medium white is white, a black, and a touch of yellow, and so it's very warm. But see, you could use this up here to warm and gray that color as well there. See, doesn't that work nice? And so that's kind of a neat color as well, getting that grayish uh, kind of tone. Now, I want to just come in here. I want to... I want to start, so when I pick up my my color, I don't have anything in it. You could put a little open medium or a little extender, but this is so wet here, I'm just going to push my thicker paint here so it sticks. See how it sticks right where I put it? I want it to stick because this is all so very wet. And then I'll start out here, and then I'll lift the pressure as I come out here because I want the edges of this hydrangea to, to really kind of disappear. Okay, so I'll put in some heavier little blue violets, maybe a little touch of it right out through here. Let's add, if with the shadow, so if the light's going to be coming in through here, here would be the, the downside, would be a shadow side, so we'll push some of that blue violet right down here. And maybe slightly different. See, I'm, I brush mix a lot, and... Uh, you know, I used to be when I was a young artist, oh, I'd try to make enough color and then I'd worry about, oh, do I have the same color? And then I realized you don't want the same color. You want your colors to move and evolve through your painting. So here we'll push this out. Look at those colors though, isn't that pretty? All right, so we'll push that in there. Now, let's, let's concentrate on this warm side. The warm side in here, and boy, that yeah, that uh, medium white with some of that yellow would be perfect. Now, there's a lot of cool color in here. You might even rinse out some of that violet out of there because it will it will instantly cool anything you put in there. So when you do that, I usually, and I'm working on extender, I will touch some extender into the brush, and I do that because water is a solvent, and that solvent will eat through your paint really quick. So you don't want to have too much of that around. Let's take some nice warm. Let's warm this up. Yellow oxide's in that color, so we already have that. But let's just warm this up. So look at my warm cool here. Maybe a bit, not quite that bright. But let's put some of that warmth. And see, that's the coloring that we're doing there. Do you see that? That's the coloring that we're doing there. You see that real warm kind of yellow up here let it fade away a bit right out here on the outside bring them together a touch this will start out where it's kind of heavy and then just bring them together a bit you don't want to create a line you want to drag one down into the other a bit so that you uh you know you pick it you might even like come back in here and hit just a little mark you're like well look what happens in through here you know some of those others you get little touches of it right so don't just create a line. Carry the color through a bit. Don't just create a line. Okay. That's kind of pretty. Let's push this uh, a little more yellow. Not quite as bright. Maybe even a little bit of the medium beige in here. So it's not quite as bright because I want some of this to diminish down. Okay. There we go. And I like my hydrangeas when I paint them that they're not completely perfectly round. Let's just drag this down a bit more. And a little bit of this violet down here. Just letting that fall down here. I like that. Let's get a little bit more. A little bit of white here. A little different. Let some of this fall down. Little touches of some of this back here. There we go. Just, just ideas of it, right? It doesn't have to be, you know, when you after you paint your main hydrangea, the rest of this is just good color movement, right? Just good color movement. Other marks of colors coming in through there. That's what we want. Now, let's get in and let's play some more. Let's take some darker yellow. Darker yellow. A few little hits of some more yellow. Boom. Just straight yellow oxide. A little bit of heavy paint 
here. And I'm doing this to break up color. You know, you get beautiful hydrangeas when you have, you know, modeling of color through. So you don't, you want, and you know, this wet, painting on this wet is wonderful like this, but you know, you don't want to hit it too many times because it becomes one color and you don't want that to happen. So we'll, um, we'll do that. Okay. And then we'll come in and we'll, we will add just a bit more of the, let's say a bit of the um, more violet. That's my phone going off of there. <laughs> yes, so we'll take a bit more of the violet right in there, okay? And so you don't just have, you have some variations of it. Maybe a touch or two showing up over in here, okay? All right, so that's a good start on that right now. <laughs> like I'm sitting there looking at this one little mark right there and to say, boy, should I change that? Or maybe just add a couple more little marks right there to back here. I'll just use my filbert. This is a big number 10 fusion filbert. This is what I'm going to do most of my painting with. Now, this is, this is still very wet, but it's tacking up a little bit. When it tacks up, it's easier to paint. It's not always easy to paint on when it's super, super wet. So that's why I like to use the acrylics. You can, you know, just take a, a bit of a break and let it dry a bit or, you know, and I do love the look of a paper towel every once in a while through some of the marks to uh, just help give that interest. Now, Okay, so let's paint the hydrangea. We don't want to come in here with white. So let's come in here first with some cool and some warm together here, and this will make a neutral gray. Keep some white right out by your palette so you can see just how much darker you are. I usually have my value scale up over here, but if I keep white out here as that's my whitest, I don't want to go anywhere near this. I want to be a few values down, I'll be safe. And I'll use this to create some soft little ideas of petals out here on the flowers. Okay, so start out, I start out heavier here where my flowers are going to get the lightest. And then as its color is running off my brush, I start touching out to other areas. So I, because I don't have as much color and I won't impart that much difference into it. So you've got to see there's white areas of the flower and then there's some gray areas right into here. And that's, and I just want to do this. I'm not going to emulate a whole bunch of perfect um, petals in there. I don't have to. I really don't have to. Let's take some of this. Let's gray this down. These are beautiful colors. Matter of fact, we'll let this slide just a little more violet. So you can see it here. It's a little more violet here as I come down this way here and I just you know you can build the little flowers if you want I like to make the impressions of the petals and then I'll build more petals as I come forward here let's take some of this violet right out through here just ideas of those petals here there we go and uh, sometimes I'll add a little open medium. This helps keep it really wet. Sometimes if my color's a little too thick, I will add um, some extender, which helps thin it. If I get too much with the mark, I just touch it and push it into the background, the wet background, which does what I call incorporates the colors, softens them out here. Okay, I just wanna get some of that movement you know, you don't see the individual flowers. You just see petals and movement there. Okay, let's put some right back down here. Some of this movement, there we go, right down here. Just soft, maybe a few over here. Just some, and more than anything, the movement. See, as it mixes up with some of this wet background, it just puts in the movement, not really the color, the movement, right? Okay. Now, let's go a little bit more white. May, and as I go more white, I go warmer. So now I'll come in. I'm still not white. See how I'm still not white here? 
and I'll put in another layer here, maybe a few of these that I start to shape up more towards little rounding petals, you know, four petals or so, or some, some hydrangeas have just real big, almost solid petals. Some have like little four petal flowers in here. And I'll start to soften some of this, lift the pressure, just barely touch it as I round over and start coming to that other side here. Sometimes I'll just touch that off with my finger so that, or you could use a soft brush. Don't touch it with you painting oils. Don't touch it with your hand. You could use a soft brush to touch it off. And don't touch it with your hand. And here we go, a little bit more. Maybe some soft little marks out here, little bits out there, okay? So you see we're capturing that impression of that movement, right? Yeah, let's just capture that impression. Let's push some of that right out here. Mark or two. And so you see I'm running the color. I start to color heavy where I am, you know, right where I want that. The roundness of the flower. That's where you start. Don't load up a brush right here again and then come out here. What you'll do is put the heavy one there and you'll flatten your flower. See? So we want the color to run out. And we don't want to do that, Dave. We want to touch in here. Let the As the color starts to run out, then we can start touching out a little further. Does that make sense? Okay. Let the color run out. Is this that medium white is almost color of that color there. So we start right up here where I want that light. And then I... And I'm just imagining little petals because you don't see the full until you're up by the top. You don't see the full final one until you're up by the top. All right. Okay. Some small little marks right off here. Not too much. There we go. That's kind of pretty. Now, let's go in a little bit lighter. Now, a little bit lighter, I'm going to add some open medium to this. This is going to help transparent some of my paint. Maybe a bit of yellow, so you can see it's not quite white. I don't want it to be quite white. And now I'm going to focus down more, and I'm going to slow down, maybe put in some textures here, you know, on some of these little petals here. And uh, I might even go a little bit more of a, a smaller brush or something like that. If you need to, you can go to a slightly smaller brush. And we'll draw in some of the smaller little uh, flower petals here right up on top that you will see. Especially right up there. And you can see as I work this, I'll put most of that paint right on the corner of my brush. And that's what I use to almost lay in a little texture here. And we'll lay, you know, which helps it relief or brings it off of the surface there. A little bit of texture. Still very close to white, but still I always leave myself a, a bit of not quite white <laughs> so I can come back and touch some other areas again here so we'll put in some more up here right up into the front see and you can see that little bit of texture there is awesome just stands right up front painting a, a beautiful painting of hydrangeas like this can go pretty quickly you can see it goes pretty quickly here if you just get those colors in there like that it just works nice and goes so fast so and then we'll leave a few little marks sometimes just little edges of petals here little marks there so they don't have to be so you just do this this leave like a little mark and it looks just like a little petal edge instead of having a full petal there. And let's put some 
edges right in here. So I can really build in, you know, whatever kind of shape that I want. Sometimes I, I like them to fall down and, you know, push up into other shapes. And I think maybe I'm going to do that, like with this one right in here. So what I'm going to do is negative paint while we let some of that set up. I'll negative paint here some pine green and some uh, pine green, burnt sienna, and a little bit of blue here. We'll negative paint up and in here, right up in here, and take off that round shape. Touch, see? Take off that round shape, right like that. And then we'll, we'll come into right in here. So it just takes off that round shape right in there. And try not to have too much texture with that. There, and you can see, so what you're doing is you're basically, you know, painting the bottom side or what you would see like in some of these over here, that the ends of that you know, the bottom edges of that, paint some of that out. So we'll paint some of this right up in here like that. We'll just take some of that roundness off of that. Now that's your choice. You know, if you feel like something gets a little bit um, too round here, you know, you the hydrangeas, they can get really, really round. And they're not always necessarily round. So you can just paint off some negative color and take some of that roundness off. Let's take some of this off here. Negative color is the background color, basically, that you're working through that area there. Right in there. Right through that. There. So just take some of that extra roundness off of that hydrangea. And, <clears throat> you know, how much you do, uh, you know, that's kind of that's kind of up to you here. You know, you want to see, maybe I want a petal. We'll put a softer petal right out here. And just give that. So... You know, and you can slowly work in and adjust just so that they don't look like big round balls. As you can see, it doesn't, you know, it's not always that way. And some of that background that you work there, you can come in and uh, take maybe a touch or two of it back up over in here, through here, there, and even let some of that background see through some of these other areas and that makes them look a little lighter, a little airier as they start to pick up some of that background tone through there. So it's not a complete solid ball, if that makes sense here. And that's what, you know, when you, when you give a variety to your shapes, not just round shapes, when you get that variety in here, that's when you get really pretty shapes with that. Okay. Now, we can take some beautiful yellow, maybe a little bit of green here, and we can come in here and touch some of this. This is a good center color. You don't have to give a bunch of centers, but just tap some of this in as some potential center color here, right? That's kind of pretty there and uh, a little bit back in there just little touches and you know you can uh, before on the other one I gave just little light colored I just took the corner with just some white here first and just touch touch like a little center you don't have to have very many of them and uh but just the idea of a few centers. You could also use a small brush or so. But a lot of times, you know, when I was a younger artist, I would, I would switch brushes all the time. And that's a good thing. I mean, that's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. But I find myself as I, 
as I've painted more and more years, I tend to do things with the same brush. So I tend to just use different parts of the same brush. And uh, I like that as well. It's, it's, I don't have a bunch of different brushes. But there's artists that change brushes all the time. And that's, I did that for a long time. And it's actually a, a good way to do it. But, you know, it... You know, I I work, and one reason why I did start doing that, it was like, I did it because um, it gives me more control of my of my brush. When I go in to make marks, uh, I like to use all different kinds of, of edges and tips and roll and work my brush. So when I ask myself to, like with a filbert brush, a filbert brush can make a wide mark or you can turn it slightly and make a more narrow mark and you learn to use the different edges and stuff of your brush to make all different kinds of marks here and uh, so it it keeps your brush what I call the rock and roll of painting you, you know it just um, it gets you used to using your brush and constantly moving it and changing it. And I like that. And that's helped my my overall marks that I make. Gives more interest to it. Now I'm going to come back up with some white. The white, the texture, white here. And we'll just add some concentrating mostly up here by our center of interest and uh, build this up here and let some of these little edges and stuff start to fade away here this gives more interest and so and I can cool some down. I can warm it up a little bit more if you want. You can do that with glazes later. I've showed you before how you can come in and glaze, but uh, a few smaller. The rule is, the law of disproportionate color is that as the color increases its value, the area in which it occupies decreases. So lighter, smaller, basically. And that's what happens. You know, that's why you have little shines and stuff. But that's kind of a neat little thing here. I think I'm going to put maybe not quite completely white, gray this down just a bit and have just a few other little marks out here to take that off shape there. Don't quite know exactly what's going on with that hydrangea there. And a few other little marks there. Not as much white. Maybe some of the medium white and white here will add uh, a few smaller not as many let the color fade as it goes down here tip some little edges and stuff there as they go down it's kind of pretty um and i have maybe just a couple of them right up here a bit more right up here Right up there. There we go. There we go. Now, so that's really pretty in there. So there's a lot of blues. Now we can deepen our blues. We can also take some of the reds and stuff. See, you see more of a reddish pink in there too. So if we want to add some more interest to the painting, let's go maybe even almost towards an orangey color here. A little bit of light. Uh, let's add it just a bit of pink into that. A real soft pink. And let's just add a few little marks. See, that's just a real pretty color. And I'm just whispering this. I call it whispering it in. Little touches here. Especially as you get to some of that transition. See, you get that little touches of that pink through here. And... There you go. That just adds more interest. Sometimes, you know, like I do with the other ones, I'll carry it a little heavier on a few. Like I might carry it here just a touch heavier. Here. Just a touch heavier. 
right in there. Just touch, touch, touch there. Right in there. So, see, that's a real pretty color. And sometimes I will take some of that color and just add it out into the background into a few little marks. That might be too heavy right there. So I just drag it a bit. Okay. And, I, and that helps that. Now, if you want to pop an edge out there, well, let's first just do this. Okay, I'm just going to take just a bit of that color out of the brush. Let's go back to towards our violets. A little blue, a little violet here. Back towards our violets, okay? A little bit of white, a little bit more towards the blue here. A little bit more towards the blue some white nice violet see i love and it's right in those colors i love some of these colors right out through here so let's build them up just a bit more here and just add and this will add shadows and lights so you see like through here boom there's a light sitting right on that shadow side so this will push in a bit more shadow and light into the painting. And if it's too much, add some more white to it so it'll soften out. White. As you add more white, it'll soften out because it becomes lighter and less aggressive on the, um, on the hydrangea. So a few little touches out here, maybe a bit more. And again, just like the other thing, you can add a few marks of that out take some of that out a bit it just looks nice you know and um, now so I've got that and I could build more if I wanted that hydrangea to come up and be built up some more I could you know go a little bit lighter so I have this vitamin in my brush and then I'll neutralize that with a bit of yellow so over, I'm not going to go to pure white again. So here's my pure white, but I'm not quite there. I'm down just a bit, and I can come in and build. If you want your, your hydrangea to be a little bit more round, go through and work your light colors or light tones again. And you can see it's slightly different. And see the, be the beautiful edges that you can get there. See, that's just real pretty. And let's just take a few... Bring those together, a few, right there. And uh, yeah, that works. Now, let's take some of that color out of there and let's lift the hydrangeas off the bouquet, off the background. And how you do that, we go to negative painting. Some of our darks here, a little blue, a little green, a little burnt sienna. Try not to mix it up so perfectly well. And I'll come in here and I did this on the other ones, and I'll lift around the hydrangea itself and start to put in like what is background leaves and see how that lifts that part of the, the hydrangea. So I can come back. Um, let's, let's add some extender here. I don't want this to be super thick. I can come back right up, like back up in here and lift through here, real soft, and see that lifts the hydrangea off that background. Change the color up a bit. Here, change the color up just a bit and put in a, a touch more dark, touch more dark area. And see that you get that combination of light and dark and um, it just uh, lifts, lifts the hydrangea up. So we'll push a bit here, we'll push out, maybe a touch right in there. You can see it shapes it just a touch different. Maybe I want to lift this one little area out here, so I push a little negative painting. Doesn't need to be a whole bunch. Just a little bit of that negative painting right in there. Lift that one little edge, see, and it's safe, and you can leave that other part there soft. You know, whatever uh, makes your little heart sing there. So now we'll add some yellow over here to this, to the green and to that. 
and let's come in here and let's push in a nice larger hydrangea leaf and a little darker maybe up over here push in a darker one long ovals here long ovals a little bit more light green here just there we go and if you want it brighter go to the Hansa yellow this makes a brighter might be kind of pretty to have a little bright green in there as well and yellow oxide if it's don't if it's a little too bright but it might be pretty to have a, a touch or two of some of this brightness in there right in there like that let's put a mark or two some of this right out here and see I'm not going to get perfect with my leaves here I'm just going to suggest the leaves here I think and uh, but you can make them more perfect ovals and do you know do more of a perfect painting if you want I'm going to let let it be uh be more suggestive of the shapes. I might make a, a few more perfect shapes, but I like I like suggestions here. I like to do suggestions. So here I'll just put in the suggestion of the ovals and some of this color right up through there like that. And uh, maybe some burnt sienna blue and green. And we'll just drop in some nice heavy stems here. Right over that other one, it'll push it back here. And the, the hydrangea stems are quite heavy, you know, so you can get quite heavy with them. I used to grow the most magnificent hydrangeas out in California up along the coast. It just, they were the one things that I could hardly kill and then when we moved out to Pennsylvania I had the hardest time keeping them alive <laughs> it was just out on the coast of, of California they just grew like crazy out in Pennsylvania they just wanted to be so finicky so I'll just add a few these are just little marks of contrast and I'm just looking where I want to go <laughs> my dog is there barking in her sleep little marks of contrast where I think I might want to do uh, if you think that that I mean if you want to make these lighter and stuff you can push some of this back but I think I kind of like that guys I think I might leave that I could you know there I could put some more white textures in there or if you really want something let me show you if you really want, let's just take a little bit of this dark. If you really want to like focus in a little bit more into that center, you use your darks, see? And that that contrasts the light. So I can use my light and dark, put in a little bit of dark, put in a nice light textured contrast right in there, and I lift that petal right off. And how much you do, that's going to be up to you, right? How much you do, that's up to you. You know, maybe I want to have just a few little marks, little marks, just to say there's some outside edges of that flower there. Um, you know, do you want more, do you want more yellow green light in there? Do you want to put in a little mark for a vein line? And, you know, that's up to you here. You know, just... Uh, how much do you want to have? All of that's just fun. You could watch that other one. Make sure you go watch that other one and see how I do it there as well. I like to always, you know, with my paintings, I, I, I like to always change the way I do things, constantly change the way I do things. Keeps my, my whole, uh, you know, you follow, well, let me put it this way. You follow good principles of art, light and dark, you know, toned against intensity and all this stuff. But the application of those in which order you do it isn't always 
it, it's not set in stone. That's what makes every artist different, okay? So we have known things. And then how we can, you know, uh, the order in which we put those in and, uh, you know, um, whether I do it uh, wet onto wet, you know, or whether I do it, uh, you know, glazing or dry, that's going to be uh, a sign of that particular technique I'm going to use at that time. So, and you can use, and you can do all kinds of ways. And I am constantly exploring those ways. Does that make sense? That's what I like. I like to constantly explore some of those those ways, those methods. So, little bits of green here coming down. That's kind of neat. Maybe a little spark of that lighter green here into the stems, just a few little marks. And I like that, maybe a, a little spark of that light green coming in through here, which, you know, you pick up some of the stems of the hydrangea in here. The little, the little stems and stuff moving through. That's all up to you, how much you want to do. Nice little chisel there. But that's kind of a pretty and kind of a quick painting we did there. So <clears throat> kind of up to you. I think I'll leave all of that other all out to there. But we captured the main feeling of it, the main colors. You could have more violets in here if you want. You could put more pinks and more yellows. Um, you know, I could, I could lift off a mark or two of more yellow, little yellow oxide. Lift off another mark or two of it in there to really give a nice, warm, cool feeling to it. And, um, but that's all up to you, okay? But a little quick painting there. That's just kind of pretty to see that out there. And I do like leaving this out there. If you want to soften it, you've seen me before. I've taken paper towels and softened through some of the edges if I feel it gets too much. But I have enough dark in here that uh, that isn't really going to be a problem, right? And so uh, I'm not worried about that. But if I, if I want to keep that and I want to create even more, you just increase the contrast right in here. So see if I take a touch more dark, just a little bit of it right into there, you increase that power of that um, contrast right in here. Remember that contrast, light against dark, warm against cool, um, you know, intense colors against tone colors. So I increase that right up in here, right up in this area. And uh, I increase the contrast and your eye pulls away from here. It gets a nice interest here, but pulls away. You could also take a little bit of light, come through there, but I like to do it with that water. I'm not gonna do it, I'm gonna leave that. I like that, I might put just a mark or two here. And then I'm going to quit playing with this so I don't screw it up because I like the painting. All right. So there you go. There's some white hydrangeas, how I would approach them a la prima. And a very, very simplistic and a very, very fast painting. Okay. Have some fun with it. Use your open medium. I used a lot of extender up into that. And it's still not too bad. But look at this, guys. I don't know if you could see this. This is still wet. See? See, that's still wet all back up through there. So all of that, all of that background is still uh, very much wet. And that's what Extender can do to work with that, okay? All right, so uh, I'll put all the listing of the colors and everything in the video description. And uh, those of you that are members of the channel, if you're looking to be a member of the channel, just uh, go down. We have three different levels, and we try to we try to add a couple of videos for our members each month, and we uh, put photos, reference photos, and stuff like that there, uh, in that um, in the membership and stuff. Um, and we're going to be adding some more. We're going to be adding quite a bit more to the membership here in the next couple months. But if you want to be, you just go to our homepage there, and uh, you know there's a join button there, and you can just uh, look to do that. If not, please think about subscribing. Make sure you click that little bell so that you get notified when I release a new video. Okay. And we really appreciate that. Everything we try to do here, uh, we, uh, we try to do for, you know, for free as much as possible. We have that membership that just helps some of it. Um, but, um, we try to do that because we really enjoy, I love teaching. I love teaching you guys. And you see, I answer, I try to get to all those questions that you ask, I try to get to them. Sometimes it takes me a little bit because I am a grandfather of four little girls that are always busy. But um, 
and we were building Pinewood Derby cars this weekend, so we have that at the church. But uh, they're always busy keeping me busy, but uh, I try to get to all of that, and I, I appreciate so much everything, you guys, all the support that you show our channel. You know, we love all of you, and thank you so much, and we want to do this artistic journey together, okay? So if there's something you want to see, make sure you hit the comments down there and do that, right? And... Uh, you know, come join us. You gonna come see? Come here. Come see everyone. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Yep, here she is. <laughs> this is the one. If you heard snoring just a few minutes ago, this is her. She's been with me my whole career. So, anyway, thanks very much, guys. I'll see you guys on the next one. I have a seascape all done or uh, ready to go. I think that might be kind of fun to get that one as well. All right. All right. I'll get that in there. We'll see you guys on the next one. Hi, you. <laughs>